What's up, it's your man Rico, the opinionist. Man, it can, so I guess daylight saving times has been what, pushed back or pushed up. I don't know. I know it's just like it's been dark since six o'clock. Damn. So really, I'll turn it around, but you won't be able to see me that well. So, all right, yeah. So you can barely see me, but that's okay. Just listen to my words. David was good. Um, this has been a conversation in the making for me for woo for a long time. Just never thought to even point you know, make these observations. You know, with the whole Kyrie Kanye thing, and anybody else who's been an athlete who dare to stick their neck out for speak their opinions or facts about the power structure. You know. But it's something I noticed, and uh, for years, as it relates to our black athletes, and the black professionals, mainly the basketball player and the football players, it is something about these two groups, because we don't have that many. Now, I guess the tennis players and all of that stuff, but it's more so when I see the black male athlete, because a lot of our, our kids are not just turned on by the... Um, by the female athletes. It's the black male athletes who lead the charge of uh, being the most watched, the most, I guess, desired, the most, uh, you know, who were kids look up to as mentors and idols and, you know, the black male athletes. And, and it's something that, that always caught my attention, I guess, because I'm not into sports. I'm not into sports, so... I'm a little different than everyone else who comments on sports. I couldn't care less about sports, really. I look at behavior. I pay attention to the world around me. I pay attention to the things that people get distracted by. You know, the dribbling of a ball or the, the amazing catch of a football pass or a layup. I don't get distracted by that because I'm not into sports. Now, I will say, when the women's track team is... Whew, now, I get distracted by that. I ain't going to lie. And the college volleyball team, UConn and everybody else, college women's volleyball team, now I get a little distracted. But for the most part, I guess the sports that people are really into, basketball, professional basketball and football, I couldn't care less. And who in the hell watches baseball on TV where well, there aren't any black guys playing baseball? If they are, they're from Cuba. And so... <clears throat> So, Rico, what are you talking about? You know, this whole thing with Kyrie Irving and and Kanye, but mainly let's, let's focus on Kyrie Irving because he's a, a professional basketball player. And then you have uh, Kevin Garnett, who also they try to get a hold of and try to handle a certain way. Any black basketball NBA player, it depends on the season, any black any black. NBA player that dares to say anything that makes sense to uh, make sense of this craziness that's going on around us, they automatically get attacked by the media. And so the media controls the minds of the masses, so the masses automatically go with the media says. Get it? That's why it's so easy for a small percentage of a group of people who've been lying about their heritage for the past, oh, <laughs> hundred years and snatching away from our actual African people, well, when someone, anybody says, says something about it, of course, it's like a beehive. <laughs> like you say, you know what? I don't think Beyonce is a good singer. All of a sudden, all these weird people come out of nowhere. You got Beyonce messed up. That's the queen. You know, they, they call it the beehive. And so the Jews have a Jew hive. And anybody you say anything that's an opinion or the facts about these folks, that dead you have comes out, right? But see, something else I want to I want to go to another place as it relates to who owns these black athletes. Because I don't look at them as actual grown men. I don't. I look at black athletes, but particularly the NBA players, you know, as grown-up kids. They're not a Jim Brown. They're not Muhammad Ali's. They're not John Carlos. And coach, you don't know who that figure is. And John Carlos is the brother. In the height of the 1968 Olympic Games, he threw up the black fist. 
Yes, he was banned and all of that. But he did something that's so symbolic of who we could be as a people if we all balled that black fist, not only physically but in our hearts and, and push that power. And it's a shame that individual black men have to do that and, and, and be sacrificed for us and we don't even care. It's just time out for that shit. So the thing is, these black athletes that we have today, you know, they are no Muhammad Ali's. They are no Jean Carlos. You know, they are no Jim Browns. You know, these are these are bought and owned and trained adults who have God-given gifts, you no know, athletic ability to shoot a basketball, dunk a bat. I mean, shoot a yeah, shoot a basketball, dunk a basketball, run a football, catch a football, throw a football, and they get paid handsomely. While the owners of these guys make a mint, M-I-N-T, <laughs> off of their, their ability. Same thing whenever we get into, even going to music. Yeah, talented African Americans in music. They own 25 cents. The record labels and others own the rest of the, the $20 that go uh, gets used to pay for the CD or whatever back in the day, or the albums or what have you, right? So... And I'm, I know, I'm still going to get to why I'm, I'm on here. Uh, y'all ever notice that, you know, I'm, I put the title up here for a reason that, uh, say, uh, professional black athletes, and I'm going to say mainly the males, they're owned. I mean, all athletes are owned, but the black males are really, I guess because they're black men, they, they look, they're the strongest of us, the toughest of us, but they're the ones who appear to be the weakest of us based on them working in this system. And those who dare try to express their manhood, well, you know how that goes. But it's something else. Did I, you know what I just mentioned? That black kids, for by the millions, look up to these black male athletes. I'm telling you, they look up to them as if because... Hell, a lot of them actual dads are not home, so they're like the surrogate fathers to a lot of these guys. And uh, like the rappers were put in as the substitute of surrogate dads. And so y'all ever notice that Shaquille O'Neal, LeBron James, you ever notice they never, you never see them in a photo op, a commercial, or a movie, or anything with black kids? You never see them in a neighborhood with black kids? Every time I've watched or took, or taken a peek, at a basketball game is always some white kid who's getting sneakers off the feet of LeBron James or tennis shoes out of the hands of Shaquille O'Neal and other very famous black basketball players. You never see them give a black kid. But I'm sure a lot of y'all finna go and look up old footages that may be out there good. Shoot, I don't mind proving me wrong. But I'm gonna tell you best of my observation. You never see these black athletes, these famous ones, come to the community where black kids can't afford to go to these suburban places. No, um, no, a lot of inner city black kids can't because sometimes you're on the exception that all black kids live in the ghetto and that's not true. What I'm saying is the mass, the mass core of black children who love these black athletes like they love Shaquille, like they love Kobe. They love you, but you never saw any of these, any of these athletes in a, in a, in a, uh, vicinity. Of black kids. And I always thought something was wrong with that. Because black kids, I mean, man, I would say Jordan, Jordan. <laughs> and you never see Michael Jordan around black kids. And they had a video out where it shows you that Michael Jordan can't stand young black boys. Can't stand them. <laughs> he, can't, he hates that they're around, but black, young black boys are the ones who buy all these Negroes tennis shoes. They buy all of their jackets. All of this stuff, and they can't stand the sight of black boys. You can debate amongst yourselves. I know what the fuck I see. You know, and they don't do shit for black. These same black boys who run to the malls, who spend their last dime on tennis shoes, jackets, uh, whatever athletic gear they think these black dudes are selling, they'll go get it. But then, <clears throat> motherfuckers in America, they, they bought some Yeezys too. <laughs> Isn't it interesting that a non-athletic person like a Kanye West is giving Jordan's huge competition, huge competition. Shaquille O'Neal know one about going to buy his big country ass shoes, so he started selling his shit in Walmart. Well, I'm just doing it because, you know, 
uh, people can't afford, you no know, all the prices, they still quality shoes. Shaquille, you know what the deal is. And one of my finna buy no, no shacks. So you had to go and pretend like you gave a damn about poor inner city, you no know, poor folks who couldn't afford. One thing about poor people, if y'all have not understood yet, poor people are resilient. And one of the reason that they're one of the many reasons why they're poor, because they tend to pay for what they want and beg for what they need. So Shaquille, that's full of crap. They still made a lot of money off of it, but I guess I don't know. Um, so that that was basically on my mind, just to pose the question: Have any of you ever seen these these superstar black NBA players? or superstar black football players around any black kids. You know, I know they'll do those little camps once a week on the summers, on the summer. Have you ever seen anyone, have you ever seen an NFL player throw a touchdown football or winning football to a black kid in the stands? You always see that little white kid again. You'll never see it. Y'all think that's by accident? Dr. Claude Anderson taught us about this phrase called benign neglect. Benign neglect is a political term that Congress, the President of the United States, no world power leader, no American leader should ever mention anything or any program or any policy or any law that specifically targets and benefits black people. That's called benign neglect. When you, when you, and if they do it, they're going to say, like Stacey Abrams always said, any black Democrat always says, we expect white folks to do it, but these black Democrats that y'all love to vote for ain't worth a shit. And whenever you ask them about reparations, whenever you ask them about specifically about black people, you know what Stacey Abrams and the rest of these Negro poli uh, black politicians say? Yeah, we should be uh, reparations for Native Americans, Asians, humpback whales, uh, yeah, and, and, and oh, yes, black people. And, uh, Nobody asked you about anybody else, Stacey Abrams or any other black Democrat. You know, so Rico, what you mean? You think the Republicans going to do it? Well, it's, we, we don't expect them, right? We don't expect them to give a crap about blacks. But y'all expect these black Democrats and white liberal Democrats to give a crap, right? So just listen, whenever you ask something specifically about black folks, they always throw in minority people, women, people of color. That's called benign neglect. Look the word up. I don't understand how we don't know these things, all the stuff that's not good for us. We don't understand it. So again, these black athletes, these black professional athletes, they, they practice benign neglect. You never see them publicly show themselves being uh, accessible to black kids ever, ever. Now you go and debate that. Now all of a sudden now you're going to start seeing videos and shit. Well, no, they, do. they be around them. No, they don't. They don't. Cause they, every, you know, I just saw a video that really threw me off. You know, uh, there was this little, I guess he's an Arab kid, a little white kid, about five, four years old on the damn sidelines. I guess it was his mother, or his father, uh, doing the video. It was Steve Harvey, old fuck ass. And some guy looks like an Arabian sheik. <laughs> and then you had Shaquille O'Neal. The little boy walked past Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey threw up the peace sign and said, what's up? Well, he had walked past Steve. The sheik threw up the peace sign and said, what's up? But big seven hundred, big eight foot tall, 450 pounds, Shaquille O'Neal bent all the way down and just buried the boy in all his bodily hug. <laughs> just hugged him. And Shaquille O'Neal, look at the commercials he's in. He's always playing some big ass cartoon ass Negro. Even in, in the video where he's like, I wish I had a best friend with that little white kid. They playing pranks on their parents. Yeah, you never see Shaquille O'Neal do that, or no, in a commercial or anywhere else with black kids. So y'all pay attention. Y'all, y'all be spending y'all money arguing about how much these folks make. Well, they earn their keep. They earn their keep as the little bought off bootlicks that they are. So that's why I don't expect much for no black athlete. I don't. Because in that system, that means that they're not really yours or for you. They belong to the people who don't look like us. And because that's who pay them. And they're on a contract to sell their manhood and their loyalty. Because I'm telling you, image is everything. And I know I'm not the only one who notices these things. All right, I just want to share that. 
And that's ask the question. How come you never see these black athletes, NBA players or NFL players, showing some kind of love and human contact, giving a game ball to any black kids, especially black boys? You would think with all this, how black boys live to be these athletes. You would think they would have all kinds of, I have this autograph. I have this autograph of T-shirt from Shaquille O'Neal. I have this autograph of football from whoever, ever, whatever the professional athlete is, professional football players. Black kids can't say that, but a lot of white kids can say, yeah, I have a personal autograph thing from Shaquille. I have a personal autograph this for this football player, this black football player. They got all this stuff. Because let you know that they don't have any contact with black kids. Now, make up the game excuses. I'm going to tell y'all some of myself myself. <laughs> y'all know how y'all love Dak Prescott, right? Now, he's not black, he's, and he doesn't identify as that. He's biracial. But black folks like to call biracial people black for some reason. So, i doing my little part-time hustle, right? I happen to see him. He's with his little white family. Yeah, because he was, he's on bi biracial. Him is like two, three, two white guys, two white girls. They was in a group. This is when he was on his crutches. Y'all you know, remember last year, a couple years ago, he was on his crutches from torn Achilles. Y'all remember that? And so I'm standing there, you know, I don't give a shit. But I'm not into football, I don't care. But, you know, he'd be on, he's been on TV, so I recognize who he is. And so uh, he was standing there waiting on the elevator. And, uh, and they were just playing around, him and his little family and friends just playing around. He, I mean, never saw him act so goofy. All of a sudden, these two little black boys were having to walk by, and they happened to notice. They said, oh, wow, there's Dak Prescott. And uh, again now, he wasn't doing anything but waiting on the elevator, playing around, dicking around. Hold on. And he said, the little black boy, I think he looked to be 10 and 12 years old. I'll never forget, because it burned in my, my mind when I saw this happen. And so, they're like, oh, wow, there's Dak. And he said, they said, hey, Dak, can we get a picture? And he straightened his face up and turned into a white man all of a sudden. Oh, no, no pictures, guys. <laughs> That's what he said. I looked at that motherfucker. He looked straight at me like, yeah, I saw it, punk. It was a, now, there had been two little blonde boys and two little blonde white girls. He's like, oh, sure, it's come on. ha, ha, ha. But see, but Jeff, what y'all get for teaching y'all, letting y'all black kids to make idols out of these old funk ass professional athletes. And of course, not all of them, but two men, I'm just saying on the contract. And this is what I saw with my own eyes. And that there made me, I started to do a video then, like, you know what? Why y'all keep letting y'all black kids use these motherfuckers as role models? Go back to the, the high school teacher, the college professor, you know, the, uh, the, the, the officer who behaves well. No, damn these athletes. They're bought off. They're nothing but bought off stooges. And of course, and to a damn Dak Prescott, he don't hang out with nobody black. The only time you see him black folks because they're on his football team. And who cares if he does or not? I'm just telling y'all what I saw. And he looked at me, then some little partner, some little person in his crew, crew they knew it was fucked up. They're going to try to make a joke. Because the room got kind of tense. Because I did. I started like, wow, really, bro? There been two little white kids, you would have put them damn crutches down and ran over there to get them to take a picture with them. And so, he looked at me in my face. I looked dead at him. I said, uh huh. And so, his little one, his little white friend, gonna say, you know, jokingly, trying to make a joke out of it. Wow, Dak. Like, Dak, you're an asshole. Ha 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 ha. You know, you're being an asshole. And no, I didn't crack a smile because I don't think nothing funny. One, I didn't hear no, nothing funny and I wasn't itching, so I wasn't scratching my fucking head either. But yeah, I saw that. So y'all, uh, stop buying y'all kids all these people's jerseys and shit like that. They don't care about your kids. They, they don't come to your neighborhood, especially inner city kids. They don't, they, don't, they don't come there and say hi. They don't do special events where they can come meet them and give them signed footballs and signed basketballs and take pictures with them. They don't do that for black kids. Go go watch all the games. You always see a black kid or an Arab or something, a non-black kid getting footballs and shit, signed t-shirts from the guys because they're under contract. It's called benign neglect. If y'all don't remember anything from this video, remember benign neglect. Y'all be cool. It's your man Rico.
Uh, I guess I'll get on out here unless somebody will hit that red dot and talk to me for a second. Anybody on here want to talk? Press that little green or blue dot. Let me know what your experience is or you got something you want to share. I'll accept it. I got a couple of minutes. Okay, it's just 6.52. It's already dark as crap. Oh, yeah, y'all still here. I still have my book for sale. I wrote it like years ago, but it's still good. It'll be new to you. It's called The Greatest Pain Ever Felt. It's on here. Check it out. Dollar sign. Recode the your penis. That's the cash app. If you decide to get it, it's in PDF format. So send me an email address so I can send it directly to you. If you like a copy of my my little Pete, my, I call it short story. It's like 50 pages. I call it short story. But people who read it say it's pretty cool. So anyway, but y'all, y'all ain't going to hear me. Just like out in here. When people were calling for the book out of the NFL after after Colin Kaepernick said, hey, the, all the owners said, F that. And all the owners of the NFL said, anybody that dare to say anything about it, you're going to be benched or fired. So they let you know, all the owners of the NFL don't give a damn about the lives of black men being taken, unarmed black men, arbitrarily by cops. So, and y'all kept going to the game. So there's no loyalty, there's no unity among black men at all. There's just something wrong. Across the, we got 18 million black men and we can't even get 5 million to be on the same page to even create a dent in society on a positive tip. So, but anyway, I digress. We're going to get together, black men. We're going to actually, for those of us who are not in these professional systems where we have to keep our mouths closed for 18, 20 years after we get busted up and broken up from playing the sport. Then we've got something to say. Now the time to speak is when you have all the lights, all the cameras pointing your direction. Not, not after you've done your 18 years and you're not famous anymore. Nobody's listening to you anymore. Now it's when they listen to you black men who are athletes. You know, like they're listening to Kyrie right now, like they're listening to Kanye right now. Nobody wants to hear about a rapper from the 80s talking about what the truth is, even though it's the truth. It doesn't have the light and the fame. Y'all get it? But we'll get it, black men. It's just me trying to kick it off. Black male unity. It's just me trying to kick it off. We'll get it one day. Because right now we're, we're taking a lot of L's because we won't, we won't unify and recognize that we are a separate group. We need to form a separate group in this country. Not against anybody, but for us. And need to get these black male athletes in, in check. Y'all motherfuckers want us to want our kids. I'm spending money coming to these games for you. Because of you. Buying the, buying the damn materials. Your uh, hats. The damn jerseys, tennis shoes. You want to show up for my boy, come to my boy's school and speak. My, he can do it for free like you do the white school. You know, you want to respect my boy? Oh, sorry. Yeah. I'm going to come to my little black daughter school, but mainly black boys. Black boys need to see these athletes in person. The white kids sure get to see them all the time. <laughs> yeah, I said it. Rico, how come you always making it about black and white? Because that's what the United States Constitution made it about. <laughs> so I, I, I believe in the natural order thing. That's why I had no kids out of wedlock. I had no kids. I never had a wife, so what the hell I'm doing with children? <laughs> that's another live. Y'all stay tuned. <laughs> I saw the weirdest damn thing earlier. But anyway, let me go ahead and leave. Uh, check out the book. If you're cool with me, food with me on the Cash App and the PayPal. This on the, my Rico the Opinions group page, my YouTube channel, Rico the Opinions. Dollar sign, Rico the Opinions. PayPal, the same thing. I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.